Welcome to 100 Days of Trailhead, where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, and invest in ourselves. We are your trail guides, here to support you on your learning journey. We release videos weekly. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In the description below, you can find links for everything we mention in this video, as well as books and resources we found useful. Visit our blog, 100daysoftrailhead.com, for other helpful Salesforce and tech content. Are you a new admin? Do you want to know what will best prepare you for your admin role? In this video, Faris Sharif is discussing what new admins should focus on to be successful in your admin roles. Farah Sharif is a Salesforce developer at Mantrack Group. She is an eight times certified application architect, leader of the Cairo Salesforce Developers Group, and a golden hoodie winner. She is passionate about learning anything related to Salesforce. Your quest, should you choose to take it, is to journey with us to explore what a new admin needs to know to be successful. Your quest begins now. Hello, Trailblazers. My name is Farah Sharif. I'm currently working as a Salesforce developer at Mantrack Group, leader of the Cairo Salesforce Developers Community Group, and recently a Golden Hoodie winner. I'm here to present on a topic for 100 Days of Trailhead. Top five things you need to know as a beginning admin. You might wonder why as a developer, I'm giving tips for beginning admins, but that's because if you are beginning developer or admin, these tips are for you. To be a Salesforce developer, you must pass through the admin phase. That's how you understand the platform, which in turn will help you be a good developer. Tip number one, it's okay to not know everything. As a Salesforce admin, there's a lot that comes out of the box with Salesforce that you need to know of, like uh, automation with uh, process builder, flows, workflows, data management with object relationships, and page layouts, formulas, uh, validation rules. And then there's the security with sharing rules and role hierarchies. And then analytics with reports and dashboards. So it's okay if there's things that you don't know, or maybe you know it, but you don't remember it. Funny story, a while ago, I was asked to do a lookup filter, and I was like, uh, is that even possible with lookup fields, or do I have to create a custom solution for this? Then I found out that it was possible, and I have already studied before, but the thing is that I didn't remember it. It's a very small feature, that's extremely helpful, but I forgot that it existed because of all the other awesome features. That's why you have to make sure when you figure out something, you keep record of it, whether it's on a digital note or on like a notebook. I personally have a notebook for everything new I learn on Salesforce, where I explain things to myself so that when I need it again, it's there and it's explained by me. Tip number two, ask questions. Anything, and I mean anything you are stuck with, you can ask Google and find very helpful blogs regarding the topic that you're stuck with. I personally use it on a daily basis when I'm stuck with something. I find people that have already asked the same question I'm having and I go through the answers and it's just awesome how fast one could get a solution when they are determined to search for answers. I find answers mainly on those two, uh, Salesforce uh, Stack Exchange and the Trailblazer community. Now what if you can find an answer to your question? Ask questions on the Trailblazer community. Uh, the Salesforce Ohana are always there for help. It's uh, what makes the community strong. So don't be afraid to ask for help. It's never a stupid question. Just log into your Trailhead account and go through uh, trailblazers.salesforce.com. Uh, go to the answers tab here and uh, just uh, type your question. Number three always use a sandbox. 
10 boxes are your test orgs and it's your safe space to try everything bef first before going into production and i mean it you must try everything first on a sandbox even if it's a simple validation rule sometimes even small changes can have significant negative consequences so you want to avoid that uh, testing your configurations in a sandbox is essential for a smooth running of business operations without users getting affected by those changes. I also found out that documentation can be really helpful to keep track of what is deployed to production and what is still on a sandbox. Because sometimes when you are working on big projects, you have multiple sandboxes and you could forget where you've done your changes. So I personally keep an Excel sheet and uh, Every tab here represents a project. So here I have, for example, project one, project two. And then there's this table where I have the name of the metadata and its type. So for example, I have admin layout, which uh, is type is a page layout and it's deployed to sandbox one, but not yet deployed to sandbox two or production. Uh, I have a validation rule called account check. It's uh, deployed on sandbox one, two, and production, which means uh, this one is finished. So obviously there are better ways to keep documentation for yourself, but this one works pretty well for me. Number four, make sure you understand security and access. When I failed my first try on the admin exam, I looked at the scores on each topic and I found out that I had a very low score on the security topic. That's when I knew I don't fully grasp the concepts of security and access. I had no problem understanding flows, process builder, and even complex formulas. But security and access was a problem for me. It took time to deeply learn security because it's there in many forms. You have record access and the four ways to control it uh, by org-wide org defaults, role hierarchy, sharing rules, manual sharing. You've got profiles and permission sets for the create, read, update, and delete permissions. We call those CRUD. And you've got controls on access to the org itself, like passwords, IP restrictions, identity confirmation, and network settings. It's a lot of settings that you should know of because when you are working as a Salesforce admin, You've got to know where to look when a user comes to you with an accessibility issue. They're not going to tell you where to look. They're just going to tell you, uh, I don't see this record or I can't edit this report. You have to know that and start troubleshooting it yourself. If you are starting as an admin, I strongly recommend you to watch the Who Sees What series on YouTube to better understand security and access. Number five, read the release notes. As you all know, new and innovative features in Salesforce are released three times per year, spring, summer, and winter. And the best place to find details about new features and instructions for enabling them is the release notes. So to help your company learn about what's coming in the next release, you've got to learn about it first and decide if those changes will impact your existing system or if you should plan to roll out uh, new features. After you've done that, you need to establish a plan on how to communicate those changes with the users so that they are up to date with the new features. Train your users and ask for their feedback and if they have any questions, you can use a chatter group or topic so that uh, to help your users respond to your questions and feedback. Also, make sure your users know all the key dates for the releases. And then there's a, this module on Trailhead about preparing for Salesforce releases. Make sure that you check it out. And with that, we're at the end. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so we know what content is most helpful to you. What is your favorite tip Vera shared? Were you surprised to learn that all developers should know admin skills too? 
We also want to hear what topics you want us to cover in future videos. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you've stayed with us, let's listen as Farah shares her bonus tip. Now it's time for the bonus tip. Start with the most restrictive settings. When setting up profiles for users, you select what actions the users could take with objects and fields. If you are not sure what does this profile need to access exactly, I would recommend that you start with the most restrictive settings. For example, if this user doesn't need to access a certain field on the account object, just hide the field. Uh, don't mark it as visible. If they can see the field but not edit it, uh, mark it as read only. Apply the same concept for objects and other profile settings. And it's better when you do that because when you grant users more permissions than they need, they're probably going to mess something up and you will have to clean it up afterwards. So start with restrictive and if they need more accessibility, give it to them. But always start restrictive. And this is actually a best practice when it comes to security. And that's it for the top five things you need to know as a beginning admin. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spending time with us. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we share weekly content to support your tech and Salesforce learning journey. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.